Hey guys, um, this is going to be a bit of a scuffed, uh, off the cuff thing. Just took the MiG-19 out for a couple rounds on Mo Better Meta server, just to get a bit more acquainted with how it handles now. And I was curious uh, how it would go up against some of the more modern jets. It's typically in the guns arena here, people fly modern stuff. Boy, uh, was it an illuminating experience. Uh, I am recording from a track file here, that's why you're seeing the airport view and the camera sliding around. I was sitting in a menu trying to see if anyone would one verse one me. Uh, the F5 in the one verse one slots jumped down to fight somebody else, so I eventually went into the guns arena, and I'm glad I did, because the first thing I encountered was an F14. Uh, it was an F14B, that is Bravo, not an F14A, so bear that in mind as you're watching what unfolded. Now, fingers crossed the track file does actually behave itself and nothing bugs out or desyncs. Uh, it should hopefully be okay. Uh, MiG-19 track files seem to be reasonably reliable. Uh, but I don't think I've recorded from a track file off this server before, so we'll see how we go. Now, uh, because of the way Mo Better Meta has his server set up, I am spawning with a pair of what look like R73s, they're not, they're just smoke rounds. Um, I'm not sure if he does that for identification uh, for aircraft that don't have IFF, or if it's just to bring things closer to the configuration typically used in American EM charts or what, but uh, that is what is on my wings. So spawn in, uh, I couldn't remember the Tomcats wingspan off the top of my head at uh, like at anything other than full uh, extension I know full extensions what 64 feet so I just set it to about 15 meters which seemed about right for a tomcat with its wings mostly swept back which is what I was expecting to encounter so we're straight into the merge just trying not to lose sight of him here and one thing you'll notice throughout this uh, track file is I'm referencing my airspeed a lot less than I used to because there's not as much need. You can feel the aircraft much better now. You know generally what it's doing. Um, you know, even without force feedback and without your ass in the seat, you can still kind of get a feel for things. There's some subtle audio cues. Uh, just the, the visual appearance of what the aircraft is doing, how it's moving through the air. So that makes things already much easier. I can actually keep my eyes on the opponent rather than be glancing down at my uh, airspeed all the time. I'm actually glancing at my G-meter here, my accelerometer, because I'm trying to sustain about a 7G pull. Uh, so I'm figuring if I can hold this thing as close to eight to 900 kilometers an hour and 7G sustained as I can, uh, my odds of actually being able to rate with or even outrate the Tomcat are quite high. So you can see I'm keeping it pretty much on 7G here. And although I'm not really winning this two circle just yet, uh, I'm not losing it either. So I decided to mix things up and take it vertical. Looks like it kind of caught him off guard because he took a while to react to it. But again, the Tomcat with that huge pair of stabs on the back has nose authority for days, so it is kind of risky taking one vertical. I got away with it there. I was just trying to keep away from his nose as much as possible, but uh, I think a more aggressive pilot here would have probably got me with one or two snapshots by now. So it's not by any means easy mode. Uh, this was a difficult fight. I thought that I was dead several times here as I saw his nose pointing at me, but we did get away with it. I think I might have been just outside of his crosshair there. And I actually managed to force him into a bit of a vertical overshoot using a lot of rudder here to bring my nose back around on him. And we're actually in somewhat of an offensive position here. Now, I'm very slow. You can see his wings rocking as well. We're both very close to a stall, um, both hammering on the rudder to keep the aircraft stable. But as he comes back down to recover speed, I can slot in quite comfortably behind him. There's another aircraft in the background there. I think that was a friendly Hornet. There was a friendly Hornet and there was a hostile MiG-19 but they weren't really a factor in this first engagement. So now we're in the driver's seat. 
Just kind of guesstimating here. Actually, that kind of looks like a Vigan. Now I look at it. Uh, I didn't even notice that guy on the scoreboard. Now, my issue here is that because we're so low, the ground clot is kind of screwing with my uh, gunnery radar. So it's not really able to lock him very well. Here it locks him, but I just don't have the energy to follow him up in that maneuver. I managed to rudder it over in time to avoid a spin, but um, it does lose me a chance at a shot there. It doesn't really matter too much. I'm still in a good offensive position. But just here, uh, because the MiG-19 has relatively slow firing guns, uh, it's, I think the rate of fire is only 900 rounds a minute cyclic, um, and also because it carries so little ammo, I'm trying to be very careful with my shots. Uh, normally in something with more ammo, or the Mirage, uh, I'd be much more aggressive. I'd be firing a couple shots every few seconds just to put pressure on him. But with the MiG-19, that's not a very wise idea. Not if you want to have ammunition left to actually secure the kill. So again here, I'm getting very slow. Um, but it's not as dangerous as it used to be. You know, as long as I've got enough altitude and enough... Uh, enough room to recover it. I can pick that speed back up by unloading and right back on this guy's tail. Like it's it's just a world of difference. It's hard to actually articulate just what a tremendous change this is from the way the MiG-19 used to handle, where if you didn't hold exactly 800 kilometers an hour and, and about 6 or 7 G, you were dead. You would just stall out and die. So now you have options, now you have nose authority, you can actually pull the nose. Uh, I found that the MiG-19's ability to split S at low altitude is almost on par with the MiG-21. Uh, possibly actually on par with the MiG-21, much better than the F5 now. And that's a big thing because before the change I was scared to take the MiG-19 into the vertical at low altitude because I knew that if I needed to avoid the ground, pulling the stick would result in nothing. Uh, the stabs would deflect, but the aircraft would just continue downwards. That is no longer the case. Um, it, it points its nose quite well. I don't know if I'd say as well as the MiG-21, um, but quite close. And unlike the MiG-21, instead of the quite violent side-to-side uh, -side shimmy you get, like the, the kind of Dutch roll that develops, um, the 19 will tend to try and slide into one side. It'll just start to kind of yaw off to one side. So you can fight it with rudder. Uh, this guy's out of fuel here, so I actually ran him out of fuel. But I just wanted to make sure he wasn't doing any trickery, so I slotted in and my game hitched right here, as it did on the replay, and so we hit each other. Um, that was my fault for getting that close, but... Not much you can do when the game locks up. Now, DCS for me doesn't really freeze or stutter very often anymore, unless it's on Growling Sidewinder server. Um, but this is just a casual DCS session. This isn't me streaming, uh, so I haven't closed any of the background stuff that normally uh, hogs my PC's performance, so DCS isn't running its best here. So that first one I'd call a victory to me. I had fuel, he didn't. Uh, if I hadn't been so careless swooping in on him like that, I would have survived it, but it is what it is. So we're back in for a second round here. As you can see, Razbam have also managed to fix the axis on the um, ASP range setting, which is nice. That was a long-standing issue, and it was a real bothersome one. There are still some axis issues, uh, particularly mouse axis issues, with things like the arc um, frequency setting crank, but those will probably be fixed in due time. Uh, I'd imagine pretty soon because I picked up a new coder who's going to be fixing that sort of stuff. So here I don't actually set up my merge as well as I'd like, and in pretty short order I'm on the defensive. And this is where I found that although I could get onto the Tomcat's tail and I could seriously threaten him, um, once he got behind me, he was very hard to get rid of. So, I didn't want to, you know, really aggressively pull and try and force an overshoot, because the Tomcat just has so much nose authority, it can cut its nose inside you and get the shot off, and the gun's also angled upwards, which helps with leading shots like this. 
So I didn't want to pull hard and dump my speed because I figured that he'd just cut inside me and kill me. Um, at the same time, I didn't want to slacken off and build speed because it's an F14. It's going to be better at that than I am. But I can also see his nose here just hovering on me and he actually tickled me with a round there. So here I decide this isn't working. I'm not going to be able to outrate him. Not with him in the situation that he's in. So I just start taking little risks there. I almost made him stall. But he also nearly hit me. I'm just trying to jink enough to make aiming difficult. And also uh, fly a slightly longer path to try and force him to overshoot me somewhere. Defensive flying isn't really my strong suit, unless you count the silly shit I do in the Mirage as defensive flying. Uh, you know, turning into a giant air break. Um, but anyone can do that in the Mirage, let's be real. So, in things like the MiG-19, or especially the MiG-21, I actually have a lot of trouble getting people off my tail once they're there. Uh, as you guys may have noticed from watching basically any of my streams, uh, if, if I get a advantages or a neutral setup in the merge, I usually do pretty well, but if I end up defensive off the merge, I'm screwed nine times out of ten. Screwed is definitely the word to be using in this situation. Um, he hasn't finished me yet, but I'm kind of not really able to get him where I want him. The Tomcat's controlling his speed really, really well. That did not happen in the actual mission, which is interesting. So that's a track file bug right there. What did actually happen was eventually he got close enough that he could gun me um, quite easily. I'm hoping the rest of the track file doesn't bug out because that would be very annoying because there were a few good fights that followed this. Um, I'll probably post a link to the tack view in the video description or in the comments. Um, so you guys will be able to see what actually happened through the tack here. Um, and if any of the other fights bug out as well, you'll be able to kind of consult that. But I wanted to use the in-game footage if I could, because I think it just gives a, a better kind of impression from the seat, so to speak. The reason the camera is whizzing around like this and I'm looking around with track IR is because I'm still flying at this point. So, by this point he has actually shot me down, so we're in a new plane. Hopefully this one doesn't glitch out. I'm not sure if more better meta does server replays like, uh, like some servers do. So this is kind of all I've got, this and the tack view. I really wish that the track file system was more reliable, or at least that more servers um, made their server-side tracks available, as they tend to have less errors. You can't get the cockpit view of the aircraft, but I could at least show you from like an over-the-shoulder view of the pilot. You know, I could use the F4 camera. Uh, right there, your boy ripped an aileron. That sound of, of something breaking, that was me rolling too quickly at transonic speed, and I liberated myself of, I think, my left aileron from memory. I still had one on the other wing, so I decided there wasn't much point dogfighting with one aileron. I just puke out a bunch of flares and start trying to figure out how to get my smoke, sh uh, smoke rockets to work, just to kind of signal to people, hey, like, I'm, I'm not a threat. Don't worry about me. You can see there I finally work it out. You do actually have to uh, have the missiles, so to speak, set up as if you're going to try and shoot them, and then just pull the trigger, and that's what starts the smoke. Typically sketchy approach right here. This will be interesting to see if the track file bugs it out, because this landing was very questionable. I got away with it, but it was very questionable. Looks like it is actually going to work. Down we go, shoot out, and then I just held the brakes because I touched down so far down the runway. There's the uh, red MiG-19. We'll see an engagement with him in a minute. 
You can also see the uh, MiG-19's engines are quite smoky from a distance uh, until you can actually see the shape of the wings. It is possible to mistake them for F5s because of the split uh, twin smoke trail. In the Cold War server, the only things that do that are F5s, MiG-29s, F14As, and MiG-19s, and you tend to see more F5s than any of the others. So it's something to bear in mind. Two smoke trails doesn't always mean hostile if you're playing on red team. Conversely, if you're on blue team, it doesn't always mean friendly either. So we're back in a new jet. I'm going to try not to rip my ailerons here like an idiot. You can see the radar screen is just a solid block of returns. That's ground clutter. Now I'm actually curious. Um, I have seen some very brief footage, as in like three frames of footage, of the RP-5 actually being used. I think it was in a test rig or something. So I've seen kind of what the scope looks like, but I haven't seen what clutter appears as, and I do wonder if it's meant to appear as like a just a solid mass, or if it would appear as processed contacts, because the the way the radar displays things makes me think it might have some some attributes in common with the later Soviet fighter radars, which did tend to display clutter as processed contacts. So there's our MiG-19 buddy. This was a really difficult fight because everything I could do he could match. Um, he actually seemed quite good with his MiG-19. He was uh, holding his speed quite well, holding his good sort of sustained rate speeds, uh, sustained rate G-pulls, whatever. It's worth mentioning here that the way that the Americans and the Soviets charted performance is quite different. So the Americans would chart things by speed. Um, and, you know, you'd have your EM diagrams and stuff. The Soviets would um, would chart things like best sustained turn rates and so on, or best sustained turn speeds, rather, uh, a little differently. So you'd have the altitude for the particular parameters, then you would have the um, initial airspeed, so the airspeed you enter the turn at. But, well, it's a correction. The altitude, the power settings, so after burner mill power, whatever. Then the uh, SB you enter the turn at, so in the case of the MiG-19 at 1000 meters, 900 kilometers an hour indicated airspeed, you then pull and hold 7G, that's why the accelerometer is next to the gun sight, I would imagine, um, because the actual amount of G you're holding is your performance indicator for sustaining turns, uh, as opposed to your airspeed, which makes sense, because looking down at the ASI in a dogfight is not really ideal. Um, after that, you have your bank angle that you would sustain that in, which uh, was about 77 degrees from memory for the 1,000 meter sustained rate. And then you'd have your angle of attack, turn radius, and time to make that turn. So if you want to actually figure out the turn rate, you have to calculate it backwards from the turn radius, I think. Or actually, sorry, from the turn time. I, I'm smooth brain. I don't know how maths works ignore me. But yeah, like you have to basically calculate stuff backwards. Um, in fact, I think the turn radius wasn't even always listed. Sometimes you'd have to get that backwards too. So as you can see here, I just cannot find a way to get the advantage here. This guy is sitting right behind me and I can kind of hold things sort of neutral, but neutral is something you want when the guy's on the other side of the circle. It's not something you want when the guy's right on your tail because all he have to, has to do here is just cash his chips like that. Thankfully in that case he missed, but it did scare me into starting to make some more intense maneuvers here, and that cost me right here as I cross in front of his nose. Interestingly, the track file didn't register the hit, but uh, that was indeed a hit. He shot my wing off. He stitched a line of 30mm right across my aircraft from one wing to the other. Again, I'll be providing the TAC view file, so <laughs> you guys can actually compare what's happening in-game here to the, uh, the TAC view. 
It's interesting because sometimes tack view won't register hits that are very obvious in game. Um, but then, obviously, for things like this, tack view is a lot more reliable than a track file because the track files have. It's almost like INS drift over time um, because they're they're actually recording telemetry every so many. I don't know, every so many frames, every so many ticks, whatever. Um, they're recording telemetry and they're actually using the game engine to rebuild what happened using the telemetry that it's recorded. And if there's a bit of a blip in the data or say it recorded on one side of an obstacle, you pulled over the obstacle and it recorded again on the other side, it will just sort of tween you between the two places it saw you last and it'll have you face plant into a building or a tree. Um, which has ruined several track files I wanted to use for YouTube stuff, unfortunately. The other thing is sometimes the AI will actually activate uh, in a track file, so the AI will begin reacting to your uh, ghost plane as it were. Like the AI will actually wake up and begin reacting in real time instead of doing what it did in the uh, recorded mission, which is always interesting to watch. But the positional drift is the, the big thing, so that's probably why you saw him not hit me, even though he plainly did um, in the tack view. That's why you saw my jet plow into the ground when fighting that F-14. And that's also why typically um, on the second or third landing of a track, you'll see an aircraft land beside the runway instead of on the runway. I believe that uh, that issue is common to most, if not all, flight simulators with a track system. Um, in fact, I think that's why some of the IL-2 guys, the original IL-2 guys, tend to try and synchronize um, recordings between everyone involved in a mission, and they constantly start and stop recording, so it's in little chunks. Which is a good idea, but you need several people to do it. That was a nice little kill there. Now, actually, in-game, uh, I didn't see his wing come off. It was a definitely a much more definite hit here in the track, but in-game, all I saw was him begin rolling out of control. I assumed that I pilot-sniped him, uh, which I believe was the case. I see here that the enemy MiG-19's on my buddy Hornet, so I decided to go help him out. It's probably the best chance I'm going to have to kill this MiG-19 is when he's distracted by somebody else. And you can see here, now we're uh, pointing upwards away from the ground clutter, and we've got some decent altitude. The radar's actually quite happily doing its thing, at least until he pops out from the bottom of the scan volume for a moment. Here I realize he's going to try and force me past him with some rolls, so I lock the, or cage the reticle, and right there, he tries to force the overshoot, but I was waiting for it, so we just stitch some guns through him to finish him off. That's the Hornet up there. I thought I saw another aircraft, but it was just the parachutes from the, uh, I believe from the F-14. I'm not sure where to expect the enemy from. Uh, I got kind of disorientated as to which spawn point was mine and which is theirs. Uh, Mo Better Meta has it set up the reverse of what it is on Just Dogfight. So I was just looking for any signs of life. I did see uh, a couple of aircraft in this area. One of them just scooched under the nose and lost sight of him. And then here we have uh, the F-14 again. His wings are all the way back, so he's hauling ass. Again, because we got some altitude, you can see the radar is actually picking him up. The track radar has a much shorter range than the search radar. I think it's only about four kilometers, even less if it's in low altitude mode. So 
It's not quite as severely affected by pointing the nose at the ground, but you will have issues trying to engage a target that's either very low or um, between you and the ground if you're not high enough up. The 18's joining in the fight here. Uh, the 14 may have actually been maneuvering in respect to him to begin with rather than me, but any opportunity to get into a Tomcat's face with the MiG-19 is a good opportunity, so I decide to continue the fight and help my F-18 buddy out. Other MiG-19's cross my nose there. He's looking for the Hornet. I decide to stick with the Tomcat since the Hornet's broken off for now. Bit of a swing there. I don't know if I hit him. We'll see in the attack view. Uh, it looked like a pretty solid burst, but he may have just kind of squeezed between them. The Tomcat's a big plane, but like I said, the NR-30 has quite a slow fire rate for an aircraft gun. You know, 900 rounds a minute is quite fast for a small arm, like an infantry small arm, but it is really not very fast for something in the air. Looks like the F-14's having some difficulties here. see me cashing my chips here to try and get a shot inside his circle. I can't quite keep up with him in these turns. But he can't force me to overshoot or spit me out the back either. So I'm just waiting for my opportunity here. And you can also see, as I was saying before, the amount of nose authority that plane has because of those massive stabs. It just kicks its nose up and before you know it, it's above you. So it's something to be mindful of when you're engaging F-14s in any aircraft, not just the MiG-19, is uh, if they feel the need to, they can transition from a very nice sustained turn to suddenly bunting the nose upwards and disappearing above your head faster than you can react. There aren't many aircraft in the game that will follow that manoeuvre without some sort of preparation. Uh, even something like the Su-27, you need to pull the fly-by-wire in time to follow it. So I'm just looking for a chance here, looking for an angle. I feel like I'm about to get one, so I'm sticking with it. Although again, because we're so low, the radar is having some trouble. It does finally pick him up here, but again, he forces a bit of an overshoot. Uh, I kind of recovered. I actually almost spun there. Um, I slammed the brakes so hard I nearly sent myself into the ground. It looked like the F-14 was going down, uh, he was certainly not in a position to really threaten me anymore, and the MiG-19 was harassing my teammates, so I decided to switch targets, go up after this guy instead. Because I was already quite slow, I can't carry through the vertical, but I don't need to because by the time I uh, stall out, he's already coming back down as well. And I lost my engines. That's why things suddenly went quiet, and that's why I broke off of the target. Um, I decided I'd best not push my luck, so I tried to land here. Unfortunately for me, I forgot that with both engines gone, putting the air brakes out is a very bad idea, because uh, the hydraulics jammed, no pressure, right? And the brakes wouldn't come back in. So what I should have done was not deployed my brakes, my flaps. Uh, should have used the emergency gear and emergency flaps. And... Uh, should have left the air brakes alone, but lesson for next time. The other thing as well is when you do lose your hides, you need to make sure you quickly switch the electrical motor for the stabilizer on. Um, as the MiG-19, curiously enough, not only has double redundant hydraulics, it also has an electrical uh, stabilizer. So if you lose both hide systems, you at least still have um, the ailerons and rudder unboosted, and you have the uh, stabilizer for pitch with an electric booster. I decided to do a little bit of a walk around the jet here to survey the damage, also because I was curious why it sunk so rapidly, and as soon as I got close enough to see the air brakes deployed, it made perfect sense, I realized my mistake. But um, that was a quick couple fights on Mo Better Matter server in the MiG-19P. Just to kind of satiate my own curiosity about how the flight model pans out in pure gunfights. 
Um, you know, Cold War gave me a pretty good handle of it earlier, but I just wanted to confirm it against other aircraft that were guns only and definitely, you know, aircraft that knew I was there, aircraft that were maneuvering, trying to kill me, uh, as opposed to oblivious F5s. And the other thing I was curious about was its performance against a player-flown Tomcat, since I had only tested against AI-flown Tomcats in the uh, in the test client, and we sure found out how it performs against them. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. There'll be plenty more MiG-19 stuff to come in the near future because holy shit, it's a whole new jet now. I'm absolutely in love. Um, I would definitely now, definitely recommend picking this up. Uh, I would have before even, but now like get this jet. If you do not have this jet already, buy this jet. It is wonderful. Um, it still has some lingering issues. They're mostly fairly minor bugs, things like emergency procedures that most people don't bother studying anyway. Um, there are some click interactions in the cockpit that need fixing, things like, as I said, the mouse axis for the, uh, the arc crank and stuff like that. It's, it's all pretty minor. Um, it has a pretty good damage model. I'd say one of the best in the game. Um, the flight model now is really pleasant. Um, it may or may not need tweaking in the future, who knows? <coughs> Excuse me. But it feels good now. And for me, that's the main thing is it, it, it feels good. It's pleasant to fly. It does what I, more or less what I'd expect it to. Um, you know, any future tweaks are probably going to be very minor ones just to adjust little things here or there. It's, it's not going to need like major fixing like it did before. Uh, it looks nice. It flies nice, it's a lot of fun, and it's a really cool kind of bridge between the MiG-15, which rarely sees action outside the Korean War servers, and the MiG-21. You know, it's it's kind of a half step between them, and it's a really pleasant, really interesting aircraft in its own right. I'm going to stop waffling on, guys. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, Probably most of you watching this are aware of the fact that I do stream on Twitch, but for those who aren't, there's a link in the video description. Uh, same channel name as here. I mostly do DCS, I mostly do Cold War stuff, um, but I do play other stuff from time to time, and I also play Armor, usually on a weekly basis. So yeah, um, enjoy the new MiG-19 flight model, guys. I sure am. And best of luck hunting these guys of DCS.